Hi everyone, this is Kevin with Garrison Dental Solutions and we're tackling the top five questions for sectional matrix systems. This is question number five. It's actually more of a category really, all things wedge related. Um, as you see before you here, we've got a lot of different kinds of wedges here at Garrison Dental. And that's one of the very first questions that people ask is, gosh, you've got, you know, uh, six, seven different kinds of wedges. Which wedge should I use? Um, and I, my answer to that is quite simple. It's the one that works best in your hand. You may want to try a couple of them to see which one works best for you. So um, what we're going to take a look at here as far as uh, questions goes, we'll look at each one of these because different questions have come up over the years about each specific one. So we'll tackle, uh, tackle them kind of in order, really. Uh, the first wedge that we introduced was the, G, or the uh, wedge wands here on the far uh, left, and then a version of that that is uh, cure through for use with our cure through sectional matrix system compositite clear. Um, the wedge wand, of course, very distinctive because of the handle attached. So um, that's a, a question that we've had a lot over the years is, you know, do I leave the handle on? Do I break the handle off? What do I do? It was designed that you would bend the wedge so that you have a nice placement angle on it. You could slide the wedge into place. Then you can put a lot of force on that and it won't pop off of there and then you twist it and the, the handle will release. Now that was the original design intent. Now in actual practice we find that the people who like that product the most leave the handle right on. They drive it in, they'll tuck a cotton roll underneath here, and of course this will be bent towards the uh, anterior of the mouth. They can tuck a cotton roll under, under here. It's out of the way. If they need to adjust the wedge, they can. So as far as uh, whether you take the handle off or not, that is a personal preference issue. I would say try it with the handle on. That seems to uh, be something that folks really like about the product. If you are going to take the handle off, you have to bend it before you, you insert it and then it's a twisting motion to release the handle. So that kind of covers wedge wands. Um, G wedges, those are wedge wands without the handles. That's all those are. Exactly the same wedge design, uh, same material, um, just designed for traditional placement for people who didn't want to have the handle on there. Uh, a question that I get about uh, our plastic wedges uh, every once in a while is, you know, how do I prevent piercing the gingiva? This would be the same for all of the plastic wedges. If, if you're having an issue with that, give the, give the wedge an extra bend at the tip before you insert it. Okay, that'll help keep that tip riding up over the gingiva and not pierce it. Uh, also, uh, a little bit of a suture type movement. It's not just a st straight, straight uh, uh, driving it in. Um, you have to start with the tip down just a little bit and then rotate it like a suture as you drive it in. Um, it will go in easier that way. So, a little tip on that. Um, we have a uh, wooden wedge as well. This is soft wedge. What makes this different than a typical wooden wedge? It's been optimized for use with a sectional matrix system by making them considerably longer than a typical wooden wedge. They are also a softer wood. This is basswood or uh, uh, linden wood. Some people call it. It's not uh, maple or sycamore, which is much harder. So this has more give to it as far as uh, compressibility, um, and, and then it will also clearly and cleanly go all the way through the interproximal space, which is important when you're using a sectional system. So uh, this is uh, also our most economical of the wedge varieties that we have. A couple years back, we came out with the G wedge, okay, again, same tips essentially as the wedge wands, um, that have an astringent coating on them. This is an aluminum sulfate coating that does a great job of reducing uh, interproximal bleeding. So, particularly if you've got a patient with some perio issues, you know, they can just uh, be such a 
difficult time trying to keep your uh, restoration area clean and dry, the astringent coating really helps with that very convenient. I'm leaving them in the little pouch here so that I don't get that stuff all over my fingers, but uh, um, it's, uh, it works really well. With this, um, when you remove the wedge, just make sure you give the interproximal space a little extra rinse. Now, uh, this product over here is a wedge that uh, really isn't used the same way as our other wedge products. This is Fender Wedge. You can see the metal shield on there. These are designed to be used when you're prepping the tooth. You slide one of these in between the teeth. That'll protect the adjacent tooth from getting nicked with the burr and it will also start to separate the teeth. So very convenient. Um, great if you're working next to a crown or let's say an older composite. Gosh, you just, you just touch that stuff and it tends to really dig in. This will keep you uh, from having to restore an extra tooth there while you're working. So um, the tip that I have for you about these is make sure that when you insert them, uh, the different colors, of course, are different sizes of the, of the wedge portion. When you insert them, you want to make sure that it's the wedge portion that is holding it in place and not just the fender. Um, this is particularly important with larger restorations. You can see how loose this is in here. Okay, it's very loose. Well, if you're just holding it in with the, with the fender and then you break the contact and you hit this fender with the burr, you might flick it right out of there. So um, make sure that you're using an appropriate sized fender wedge so that it's the wedge portion that is firmly engaged and then that, that'll keep it firmly in place even when the contact is broken. So um, that's a question that we get quite frequently is about pre-wedging. Um, from what I'm seeing now in the literature and cases that people have submitted to us is far more pre-wedging taking place with any of the wedge products, including the fender wedge. There are several really big advantages for pre-wedging. First of all, let me grab one here. If you're using a, a, a typical wedge, not a fender wedge, it still helps protect the adjacent tooth by creating some separation for you so that you've got a little more room to work with your rotary instrument and not hit that adjacent tooth. So that little extra gap makes that a lot easier to work on. Additionally, uh, by stretching out the ligaments a little bit during the prep process, you will make placing your matrix band far easier, particularly if it is a very small prep where maybe contact is not broken, you can't get a sectional band in unless that's open and pre-wedging will give you that. It'll also prevent you from nicking the gingiva with your, with your burr, cuts down on the, on the uh, interproximal bleeding, helps you keep your, your field much cleaner and more dry. So I would, I would strongly urge you with whatever wedge product you're using, start pre-wedging during your preparation, I think you're going to find the advantages there are really fantastic. So that leads us to the last wedge product that I'm going to show you here today. The question that we get about this new one, this is uh, the Compositite 3D Fusion Wedge. Uh, what we've had people ask us about this is, gosh, that, that looks really uh, like it would tear things up interproximally. Well, this material, these fins are actually a soft rubber. You can see how they flex here with my finger. As, when, as you drive this in, those little fins fold down and then they pop out and help prevent wedge back out. So it, it, they're actually very easy, uh, very gentle to the papilla, um, not uh, injurious at all. So um, this is soft. So what that does is besides helping prevent back out, it does a really good job of flexing and adapting the band to the tooth. So if you've got some interproximal irregularities, you're going to get a better seal with, on the matrix band with the, with the fusion wedge than any of our other wedge products. So that's the, the newest, latest, and greatest that we have. Again, a uh, little bit of a point on them, so if you need to, just give that point a little bit of a bend up 
so that uh, you don't have to worry about piercing the gingiva during placement. So uh, that covers the wedges that we currently have. I'm sure in the future we'll have some more and we'll have to add a couple to this video. But that also covers the, the primary questions that we get about, you know, do you have to use a garrison wedge with a garrison sectional matrix system? Um, no, you do not. They are certainly designed to be used uh, with the garrison systems. However, um, you know, the most important thing thing is finding a wedge that works good in your hands. So I would encourage you to try several different varieties of the newer wedges like these because they have some great advantages that will make your dentistry easier.